We rolling, legend. All right, y'all already know one time for your mind, two time for your soul. It's your man Shizzle with a whistle, aka MC Shan. In the building, toast video. Y'all already know what it is. We about to get it in. I yeah. hear this questions that you have for me that you know been lingering in your mind for quite some time yeah <laughs> yeah man i just want to let That's people know that, here. Uh, yeah man i want to let the people know man like you know this is like you know this is a real blessed moment for me you know what i mean it's like uh you are definitely uh like i was telling you like a few minutes ago you were you were part of the the soundtrack of my life and i appreciate you for that and um you know uh what can I say about you that that has not been said already but I'm gonna say it right here and say it again this man is a legend he is an icon he's an influencer he's a businessman he's a craftsman and most importantly he's a family man so I'm I'm so honored Look, so honored and I also did this I've changed the acronym of this yeah to nigga with ambition Nigga Changing with ambition. The narrative just a little bit can change but, the mindset of people. Nigga so with ambition. Yo, <laughs> so true. Something like that. Something just moving it to 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 the left just a little bit or whatever makes a, a a ton of difference. So nigga with ambition. That's what I'm definitely. I'm I'm is. I'm a <laughs> nigga with ambition without question. You know what I mean? But definitely. Um, welcome to the Pinoy Podcast, and this is definitely an honor. Uh, yeah. What I wanted to do, man, I wanted to get into um. You know, uh, uh, the 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 beginnings. The definitely focus on um, your classic album, Down by Law, which I think is 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 the blueprint to to uh, to a lot of things that uh, that happened afterwards in hip hop. It uh, that particular album influenced uh, legends and icons, um, and I wanted to get into uh, the creative process. Of, right yeah, to it. Right. You said an important thing that influenced whatever came after. See, sometime in the game, you have a spot that gets looked over. So you get you get looked at as the guys before me mm-hmm. and the guys after me. It's like I'm in a limbo spot. Whenever you ever see them pictures and collages of all the rappers that they see or whatever, right? you see one Kango on there, and it ain't this one. Right, and that's you that's what I'm saying? it's like, and yeah. that's for every. It's like, and to me, that's like, what are y'all trying to do? Wow. Erase me from the game? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which, I which is impossible. That, that that dead area when things were changing, but I changed it for everybody that came after. Now nah, you know what 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 it is, and and, and I'm gonna say something kind of disrespectful on a on a real respectful way. What it is is that you know most of the crowd dick ride, right? So they go with whoever's the most uh, at that time. It's at the moment. So the one, the the legend, and gratefully so that he is the legend, LL. Uh, he's the one with the Kango, right? But he's not the originator of it, and he was influenced by a great man who 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 had it on before him, and he no, you know no. Let me no. correct. See a lot of people. I need a beat. Yeah. I need a I need a beat. I wasn't even making records then. Right. Why me and LL adorned the Kangos is because if you look at the artists that came before us, we were some street rhymes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Grandmaster Flash and them, they had on their suits and they did, you know, they had the fur on and the boots and all of that. We wasn't gonna do that. Right. So right, right, right. We adorned the style of the b-boy the kangos the gold chains the sweatsuits but ll was in the game long before not long before me and it wasn't like i copied his style it was just that that was what b-boys did we didn't dress like rappers prior to us you think what i'm saying yeah and so i I always people always say that they say well shan uh, no, neither one of us took each other's style in that aspect. Um, yeah, we took uh, the style of the B boy. I'm so glad you cleared that up because, like I said, you know, being um someone who loved hip hop for a very long time, and um, 
you know, uh, have gotten LL records, have gotten MC Shan records. That was just a thing. You know, you're like a Superman versus Batman, or you know, you know, when you're a little kid, you you teaming up and like, yo, but hold on, Shan had it first, nigga. What the fuck is y'all talking about? And you know, it goes back and forth. So I'm I'm so right. glad years later that you can um that you could definitely clear that up. You know what I mean? Because it was like I, I mean, you know, people say that all the time to me, and I'm like, y'all gotta remember. See, now, LL was out before me, but I made Left Me Lonely before he made I Need Love. I was singing it on tour, just mm. like how Rock the Bells, right? Rock the Bells is Molly Scratch beat. Right. Straight up. You dig right. what I'm saying? And so I was singing Left Me Lonely and things, and they, you know, oh, Russell and his wisdom, yo, you got to make one of them Left Me Lonely joints. To the right. point, Russell tried to pay radio stations to not play my joint because by this time I was making records and whatnot. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. And Russell tried to pay folks not to play Left Me Lonely so that I Need Love can be that first love yeah. ballad. Right. You get what I'm saying? Now, what I'm saying is that both y'all are uh, coming from Queens, right? Yes, sir. So that's why I'm looking at the the parallels of it, right? So I'm like, okay, the coincidence of of both of y'all coming from Queens, both of y'all uh, wearing Kangos, and both of y'all having songs early on when when people wasn't doing that, then talking about you know uh, talking about females and talking about women that y'all you trying to get, you know what I mean, and make a love song out of a, you know make a rap song out of a love song. So it was like, all right, well. From from the perspective, Shan did come out with "Left Me Lonely" early and did mean uh, first, and then you saw like the follow up. But it wasn't like you know it was so it was so it was so close, and it was so like you know it was so dope that you had that 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 to compare. You had those things to compare with. You know what I mean? You know, people don't remember. You're not even mentioning it, so you may not even be aware of Beat Biter. Oh yeah, I, of course I know Beat Biter. Okay, dope, all right, yeah. well. See, that's also falls into me and LL's history. Of course. Because once you rock the bells, I we came from a time where you couldn't steal a beat, a lyric, or nothing. Right. You dig what I'm Bite. saying? Yeah, you bite and so, up. But it wasn't his thing. Right. He had to do what the producers and the people with the money said, and he was ill enough to do it. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's what it is. Right. So he did the, the rock the bells and I heard and I'm like, you rock the bells, but you stole my beat. <laughs> Me and Bell had, you know what I'm saying? But that's mm -hmm. just the times that we came up. We right. didn't think about it as, as oh, I'm going to go beat this nigga head in. Oh, no, oh, no, no. no. I'm gonna, Yo, I'm, you know what I'm saying? We didn't. No. That just was the gladiator sport that hip hop was. What it is now yeah. is a fucking death machine. Yeah, Pardon me. It is. That. Nah, it, it, be free. Be as free as you can. Say what you want. My thing is like, you know, my, my original point is, and it was no disrespect to Al or or um say uh well well we may get into a little bit, but a little bit into KRS one with me saying that down by law, the album, this is just my perspective, and please correct me if I'm wrong, like like you just did, that down by law, whatever way. That LL listened to Down by Law, he heard Left Me Lonely, it influenced him. Not that he bit, but it influenced him. Like, yo, Shan doing what he doing. That's nothing wrong with influence. But what That's I did is yeah. separate myself. Although people still would have, you know, oh, is that LL? Right. Until they looked at my shoes. <laughs> I separated myself from every other individual and came right. up with my own staff. Right. I had one red shoe and I had one blue shoe. Man. Now, y'all remember, well, not it ain't even y'all remember. Y'all know how that Crip and Blood the Pumas. Sexy yeah. Thing now, right? Yeah. California, I love California so much because I used to go to California and have a red shoe you want, right? Mm -hmm. Being the craziest of fucking hoods, and they would give me a pass because they couldn't believe that this nigga, this, that, that's that nigga Shan, he in the hood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with a red and blue shoe, but they knew I didn't represent that. I wasn't 
You know what I'm saying? I yeah, wasn't, wasn't being about disrespectful that. to this side or that right. side. Yo, right. they just let me rock like that in L.A. And this was at a time where I used to tell people in New York, I'd be like, yo, y'all niggas think y'all killers? Yeah. Yo, these niggas from L.A. is on some real other shit. Yeah, yeah, that's what You know what I'm saying? You saw it early on. You saw it sort of. Right. Before yeah, all that you know? drive by shit floated yeah. up to every other part of the world and shit. Right, right. The niggas in LA was really doing that shit. Yeah. But you know them, I mean? they yeah. gave me a pass. But that's how I separated myself from every other Kango wearing, gold chain wearing, sweatsuit wearing artists. Right. Yeah. And, it, <clears throat> and the thing it was, you know, like I said, getting back to what I was saying, you know, uh, of you know of influence right and i'm saying uh on the other hand with krs1 you know which you know we know the the the, the story you know what i mean but the thing uh of, of how oh, i so stayed, don't know the story but we're gonna talk about it right here yeah yeah you know what i mean well you know yeah it's a legend it's legendary right but so to, are to, we at the krs1 section right now well just lightly what i want to what i want to do is just say that the influence that I was talking about, right, with no disrespect to him, is that uh, he may have, you listen to Down By Law, you hear Shan talking about his hood. We need a song talking about our hood. You know what I mean? So whatever way, and and he used that to, to his advantage, you know what I mean? Just like a lot of rappers that came after him later use the same tactic to their advantage or whatever like that. But now, um yeah real Chris story. Yeah. Chris, Mr. Magic, who we all have to be thankful for in hip hop that we even right. have a genre of hip hop, right? Right, got you. We was in the studio, power play. Mm -hmm. Chris and Scott knew that's where magic and everybody would be at. Right. They came in with this song called Success is the Word. And the group that Chris was in at that time was called 1241. So y'all could go listen to it and y'all will back Magic up with this shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they played it for Magic and Magic said, this is garbage. Mm -hmm. But Magic was the one that had to play your records on the radio that back then. He was the only one. Okay. Gotcha. And so when he did that, it was like, oh, okay, he got disrespected. They stole Molly's drum reel with the drum sounds out the studio that night. All kind of crazy shit. Wow. But that's what it was. It wasn't because, you know, it was totally different. So now, in the end of the day, okay, make a diss record. A diss record nowadays means something totally different than what it was what back it then. Yeah, definitely. This record nowadays means that we're going to fucking start talking shit back and forth on Instagram. And when I see you where I see you, me and Chris learned early on that this, if we were to act like savage niggers, right. for lack of a better word, right. we're not going to make any money. Right. Okay. And so we went on lots and lots and lots of shows together throughout the country. We was touring like a motherfucker. Me and Chris, side by side. Mm -hmm. He would do his show, I would do my show. Mm. But we learned early on that that all of that, yo, we trying to get out of the hood. Mm -hmm. We used to rhyme about being broke. Now motherfuckers rhyme about being rich and you still got the attitude. Like you was a stupid motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that ain't what yeah. nigga. We ain't have shit when this motherfucker started. So yeah. we was rhyming to get the fuck out of that position. Y'all niggas got the fuck out. You still want to keep one foot in. You was a stupid motherfucker. And may yeah. you get everything you deserve. Yeah, definitely. Ain't no. Definitely. I'm not. Listen. If you want to make your money and get the get enough to fucking take those with you that are willing to have the mind state to fucking change to not ask for something and, and willing to work for whatever the fuck they you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh good. You can't save every motherfucking body. You want to go back to the hood and be motherfucking uh, I'm a real nigga because I go to the hood. Because they, got a, the they got a false they got a false sense of security. Look, With all that you money. You know what I mean? That you, get. Right. you know why? 
because the niggas in the hood know who real niggas are, all right? Because them niggas know that you came up off of telling this nigga story. That ain't the life you live, nigga. You told somebody else a story, and in the hood, they know you ain't that nigga that you claiming this plow, 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 plow nigga on the record. Right. Right. That's the problem. So, yeah. now, you use those falsified stories and all this bullshit. Now, you got all this money, and you come back to the hood like, nigga, you was really that nigga. <laughs> ah, that calm, the hood that know you, nigga. Yeah. They're going to test your monkey ass. Yeah. All right? So, if you that nigga, stop going back to the hood. See me, I could always go back to the hood no matter how, whatever the fuck. I was always on the corners of Queensbridge and every other fucking neighborhood. Jamaica, mm -hmm. uptown, this place. You know what I'm saying? Shit. I used to be tripping when I used to go to my cousin Romy house up on motherfucking in Harlem and shit. Harlem was a whole different <laughs> salute to Romy. world from Queens, boy. Yeah, salute to, salute to Romy, man. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, you know, that's funny. So you saying that. So did you have any friends or relatives in the Bronx? All of my no. After Chris talked mm -hmm. that shit about the Bronx, all of my first wives was from the Bronx, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they would see me up in the Bronx on T Bout. My first mm -hmm. wife came from T Bout, right? Right, right. And then my my, my next wife, Shauna, my I lived on on one hundred ninetieth and Grand. Mm -hmm. Dig what I'm saying? Right in the heart, <laughs> Jerome, right two blocks over. You dig what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So once yeah. he said that, oh okay, I'm gonna go take y'all, girl, nigga. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. What's up? Yeah, you know what I mean? Not That's just funny. the regular ones. Not just the regular ones. The ones mm -hmm. y'all chasing. How about mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Took some Bronx Queens right up from under them. Took some Bronx Queens, huh? Yeah, but see, I ain't never yeah. had no problems going nowhere. Brooklyn, nothing. You know what That's I'm respect. saying? That's respect. Because it never was really on a personal thing. And and to to as me being a listener and a fan at that time, and still a fan, um, it was like it was like championship uh teams going at each other. It was it was it was boxing. It was Ali versus Frazier. It was but it was competition, healthy competition. You know what I mean? Right. Now Look. it's a hazardous, uh, it's a hazardous um occupation. Motherfuckers don't know. I didn't, you know, yeah, I'm from Queensbridge. I born out there. I lived in Brooklyn, motherfucking. I lived all over. You dig what I'm saying? I lived yeah. in fucking Tompkins projects, yo. Tracy Morgan. I know mm -hmm. Tracy Morgan. We was kids together. Miss Elise, his mom's. I know his brother. <laughs> Where you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Salute. Yo, it's like mm -hmm. I wasn't just stuck in Queensbridge. I was know what they used to call me, the wanderer. Because <laughs> once I'll be, I'll be over here at this aunt's house over here. You know what I'm saying? I'll flossy. She when you hear Tracy Morgan talk about flossy the believer lady, yeah, that was my aunt. <laughs> wow. Wow. That look, you know how you got your aunts, right? And then you got that one aunt that's out. This is mm -hmm. on the other side of the family from my, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So uh, you got one aunt that's motherfucking hit to the street shit. I love my Aunt Flossie. Aunt Flossie taught me how to fucking get around in these streets. Right. My mama didn't know how to do it. None of my aunts knew how to do it. Aunt Flossie, whenever I, we, we was fucking up at home and got kicked out, we mm -hmm. wound up in Aunt Flossie. Aunt Flossie let all the cousins mm -hmm. <laughs> just come stay. And we used to run the number hole. She taught us the street shit. Right. And I think that most of my survival to this day is due to what some aunts and uncles taught. Right. You know them what I'm jewels. saying? Uncle yeah, them great George, jewels. See, see Romy know Uncle George. Uncle George, he ain't here no more, so they can't motherfucking put the nigga under no charges. But Uncle George was the first one that used to let me carry the little thing thing. I'm like 15 mm. years old. Mm, no, 22 <laughs> or something? What was it, 22? 25 joint, you know 25. what I'm saying? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Like, yo. You. But that's... But that's you know he, he that that's all about responsibilities and being a man. You know what I mean? That's why I like growing up in the hood at that time. That shit was 
exasperated and and either you going to be that man or you not going to be that man you know what i mean All right, so like yeah. the bottom line you remember in the end of the day it wouldn't come down to motherfucking oh, arm shoot you nigga you a pussy you got to go get nah. a weapon nigga nah. now I you mean, get a weapon when there's three niggas trying to jump your ass right, i was good at that right right shit. right or, I was good for this. If a nigga was bigger than me, yeah, I'm going to fight you, right? But then when you start getting the best of my ass, all right, watch this. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to act like I'm running. But mm -hmm. while I'm running, what I'm doing, I'm looking for bricks and sticks or whatever. Yeah. Fuck Once I spot that motherfucker, oh, yeah, now we on. Because I'm yeah. quick to bust a nigga head to wipe me. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah there ain't, ain't no rules of that. You know what I mean? Look, I used to get fucking picked that and Roger George took my motherfucking Applejack one day. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, I used to get fucking picked that till one day. I said, these niggas, man, fuck these niggas. These niggas bleed just like me. I just yeah. got ruthless because I'm a little, I'm a little dude. You know what I'm saying? But you ain't gonna trap me once I fucking turn. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, and and that 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 gets me to this. When 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 did you first hear hip hop? I know it's kind of a generic question, but a, uh, oh, a necessary one. It's not. From one of the greatest places on the planet Earth, other than the Bronx, that you could hear hip-hop. Right. Queensbridge, Reese Center. My be my bedroom window at my grandparents' house faced Reese Center. Reese Center was a place where Flash and all of them, Grandmaster Flash and Melly Mel and all of them would come put on shows, Fearless Four. All of the whoever is who in hip hop would come to Reese Center and put on shows on the Reese Center. I couldn't go. I was too young, mm. but I could hear it and just the excitement of what the, what, what the fuck going on in there. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, here come Boonoom. Hip hop, hip 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 hip. Nigga, I was there when the first hip hop record came on the motherfucking air. Other mm -hmm. than Mr. Magic, you dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so there was an exhilaration. And Queensbridge had a part of that shit, whether mm -hmm. motherfuckers know it or not. But mm -hmm. you better not get trapped off by going to run into the river instead of. You know what I'm saying? Running toward mm -hmm. the train station. Because they would, you know, niggas from Brooklyn and shit would come oh, out yeah. to the project and from everywhere. You know, trying. Yeah, you know how I used to be <laughs> catching Vic. Niggas was catching Vicks all day long. You know what I mean? How many niggas look? Know how many niggas fucking wound up in the river, jumping in the river because mm -hmm. you ran away from the fucking train station? Yeah, and I'm not making no name. But everybody yeah. know who used to chase these niggas with them little motherfucking short shotties and shit. Yeah, and yeah. City yeah, yeah. Now, enough of that. All I can say is that Queensbridge was like a mecca for Queensbridge persons like myself. You know what, what I mean? Could um could you describe hip hop in 1987 for me? If you want to do it through a Queensbridge perspective, fine. But just from your recollection. That I would go to park jams and the disco twins would be bringing the turntables out. If you wasn't down with the DJ, get from behind the ropes. It was it was a different thing. It wasn't on the radio. It was it was where you can find it. Right. Hip hop was where you could find it. And if you had enough clout, you could go to another nigga neighborhood when they had a jam. Right. You dig what I'm saying? If they had right. a jam in Ravenswood or they had a jam in Astoria, you could experience it that way. Yeah. If you, you know what I'm saying? I had cousins yeah. in Astoria, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? I go to Astoria, they got a jam in the fucking back park and shit. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that was the only way that you was going to experience hip hop. Nigga bringing his mom's turntables and, a, and an extension cord that run from the free electricity from somebody's window. And they just, everybody bring extension cords and I bring right. the speakers. You know what I mean? And that's, right. that's what it was. I mean, right. at the beginning of what these people have now, they will never know what, the, what, what it was like 
the creation of some shit that they got. And just like everything, I look at hip hop and why I quit doing it is because they exploit the fuck out of us. Yeah. It's there are yeah. no old school hip hop artists that are retired with the fact that, I mean, if you went into shit like LL and uh, Jay Z and, and Puff and right. all of those that made entrepreneurial moves in this game, right. and you're sick. But those that just were just being famous artists and were big as fucking hell mm -hmm. and didn't take the fucking Kool Aid. You, 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 you had your family gonna have to do fun you for to bury you, right? Right, and that's unfortunate. And then but all now, that, could, yeah. And let me show you how I can prove it Elton John, Barbara Streisand, right? Uh, Bruce Springsteen, but yeah. they ain't no, none of our artists have that kind of clout and that kind of fucking money, right? So just sit back and say, fuck you, nigga. I ain't got to do a show for 30 fucking years, yeah. And I now imagine this. When any one of those people come to a trying time in their life when they, they can't pay for their mansion bills, they'll do a show. And there is no price on the ticket. People will come in with their checkbook and write whatever they want to write on their checkbook. And Barbara Streisand is saved from foreclosure. She's mm -hmm. saved from everything. You think that we do that for our own? No, the fuck nope. we would. And nope. the industry still robbing us for every fucking thing we've got. Right, right. That's all by design. You know what I mean? That shit is deeper than um, deeper than hip hop. It goes into something else as far as just like on some um, just a fucking mind state, a systematic mind state that was implanted a long time ago on our people, and kept us in a motherfucking lazy, backstabbing, fuck you, I got mine, you no know, fuck yours, uh, type of culture that we still living in now. It just it's just worse now. It was back then and it's always was there. That's you know the creation of the nigga. You know what I mean? The ignorance, you know what right. I mean? And it's like I said, it's gonna get far worse until it gets far better. It's on some uh destroy and rebuild shit. You know what I mean? And it's all uh, being done through this entertainment. See, yeah. When I'm at in my life right now, I don't give a fuck about being MC Shan. I don't give a fuck so much. I'm not doing shows. I don't give a fuck. You can't pay me enough to get me right. a fucking house. These hip hop, they they'll try and tell you it's a whole lot of games going on as far as this hip hop is, right? And I'm just happy that I did things in my life to say I can. I, I don't want to deal with. It. I'm gonna. I'm learning other skills to take me. I'm building tiny houses. Yeah, I don't want to get shit. into that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Bob Dylan, Shan the Handyman. All right. right that's so dope, man. So dope. The hip hop game is it, it, crazy because now they want me to do some unsung and people think that I'm messed up. Oh, you should just do it, Shan. For what? They're telling me that um, we don't have any money for a television show, we don't have any money to pay you. you that, and the disrespect. Forget the money. You don't respect my time. So you don't think my time is worth anything that you should just pay me off rip. So TV One wants to do this unsung about cold chilling and everybody's mad because Shan's not going for it. Be Why? Because y'all are not going to keep on jerking me. Check this out. I don't have to do unsung. Right. I've got my own cameras. I got a bunch of things going on here that you can see on my Instagram, MC Sham right. with number one. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to bow down to you fuck niggas. Exactly. I want some money. Exactly. Oh, everybody else is doing it for free. What the fuck that got to do with me, my nigga? Nah, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I, wouldn't, I mean, oh, I don't... We only have a budget. Well, fuck your budget, nigga. If you can't afford me and your budget, that means... And this you is T you want. They got a budget. It's network. They got sponsorship. All right, but now they got here's, where they sell us, here's where they sell us the fuck nigga shit. See, they figure old school niggas like myself. Oh, you ain't doing nothing and you should be happy somebody want to see you, right? Yeah, that's the bullshit. So now, me, I calculated like this. There's 15, how, how many commercial spots, whatever. Let's say within a commercial break, there's going to be four 
three commercials. That's fucking three. Let's just put right. three. Right. That slot is going to cost 150000 150000 mm -hmm. 150000 mm -hmm. And what happens? Right? Yeah. And what happens when they, when, when you see a, a show, when they say uninterrupted commercial, no, no commercial interruptions, that means a motherfucker paid that slot crazy. All right. All right. But see, now here's right. what I'm saying. But this is the same show that these motherfuckers is trying to tell me that they ain't no money, no budget for you to talk, Shan. But y'all didn't niggas just made what? The fuck out my face, nigga. Come on. That's what I'm, I'm not saying. Playing with these See, folks. that's that what they what they doing or what I think that they doing. They trying to make uh they want you to fall and say that you uh the only way that you'll be relevant is through their motherfucking airwaves that they gonna make money from your rate uh from seeing your story. They gonna make the money from the ratings on that because everybody gonna wanna see it. But they ain't got nothing to give to you, and that's the only way that you can be valid. It's like some pimp shit, uh, telling a, you know, telling this whole like, you know, you ain't going nowhere. You, you, you where you gonna go? You, you, you can't go nowhere with me. You need me, bitch. You know what I mean? So it's like the same type of fucking mentality. Like they telling y'all, we ain't got no money to give you, but you gonna come here and do this motherfucking interview just to stay no, valid. You, need this. you know what I mean? But you don't know how I'm pissing they are. Know how I'm pissing they are. I'll uh, get on your shit and do it for free. <laughs> and I appreciate that's that, how Shane. pissing they are because I, appreciate that. I never know motherfucking it was one of my partners gov talk he ain't never did he's my nigga for a long time mm -hmm. he ain't never did a celebrity you know what I'm saying he was doing yeah. whatever he was doing that nigga right. told me he said yo Shan once I interview you and people know how I am so if I okay this nigga, he start getting mad. Gov talk is the shit. Right. You see right, what I'm saying? Right. And so if I can help you help him in any kind of way, if motherfuckers think I'm a legit ass nigga and I was on your show, well, fuck it. Exploit that shit. Because you know what I am. I'm a nigga in my motherfucking basement building shit. Yeah. <laughs> The thing is, is you know, it, it by us doing this, it's it's in this way, it's still preserving the hip hop, the true hip hop culture that people still feed into. It's a lot of fugazi and a lot of bullshit that's out there, but you still got those that's fighting to preserve this, you know, to preserve the true culture of hip hop. You are a founder. You are founder of that culture. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. You all right? I'm good. Smoke. All right, so, <laughs> so, so you know what, OG? I, I mean, I ain't fucking OG. You know what, King Legend? I ain't know that you was blowing it down, <laughs> right? Even... <laughs> oh, that shit right there, that like accolade yeah. shit. Yeah, I don't fuck with that. Yeah, but 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 I do, and I and I'm respectful. You know what I mean? So I hate not, you. So now yeah. be respectful. But but you know me. what I? Ah, yeah. uh, be respectful to me. I ask that I don't be. Judged on that bullshit accolades. <laughs> I ask you to judge me <coughs> on the man that I am. Right. Not for some shit that I've done, but the motherfucker that you see me as. Fair enough. Fuck all that king shit, all that. Right. <laughs> that shit is bullshit. I'm here every day doing shit with my kids. <laughs> I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that, I, that, 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 yeah. I just don't like that. It's just. It's cool. Mm -hmm. I wasn't traded for the world. Right. I just don't like that. I don't like to say all my followers on Instagram. That right, I got you. Funny. Nah, I got you. We were just I was just talking with uh with my homie about that as far as um just fucking humanity being fucked up by slogans and, and sayings. Like a motherfucker say, you know, they came up all right, yo, you black. This is Negro. This is white. This is this. And then those, when once you created those motherfucking words, that created all the emotion and bullshit behind it. You know what I mean? So it's like racism come up from behind that because now they can call a, a Negro a nigga or a black is in one category and white is in another category. It's a lot of bullshit. But yeah, you know what I mean? Respectfully, I I, I, I definitely understand what you're talking about. And the humbleness is... Uh, is noted, you know what I mean? So All yeah, right, look, yeah. and now here's where we have to make come to a decision as far as we're concerned as black people. Right. Nigga is used amongst us as a term of endearment. 
Right. Right? Right. We'll use it daily, every day as motherfucking, you know. Yeah. And let another nigga call us that shit. And it's a problem. Yeah, that's so what, I'm talking about. Yeah. what is it? What's what? What's the confusion? Is it a bad motherfucking thing to say that shit, or it's the way? Oh, you can't say nigger. You gotta but say see, nigger. But see, what that's the, the that's the that's the matrix that that we all mixed up in, and that I'm trying to step out of. That's why I'm saying slogans, words, all that shit there. Changing that the narrative. Changing the narrative Neither with the ambition. Exactly. You know what I mean, and that's what I'm saying. If you know how to use words and 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 uh and execute them, well, then knowing you know. how to use words, let's understand right. how they fucking capping us, right? right? They're letting us fucking be fed with this nigga shit, nigga, 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 nigga all day right. on Instagram. I'm one fucking post from getting my whole shit jacked, right? Yeah, I, I, I say if I say nigga, I can say nigga all day. 50 million fucking times. Mm -hmm. But let me say one time, I'm as stingy as a J-U-J-E-W right. because I don't want nothing to happen to your 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 stream because of my motherfucking actions. Right. Or instead of me calling, remember how we used to call them the, the, the F word all the time? Right, right. You dig what I'm saying? You can't right. even say that. So I say bundle of sticks <laughs> because it means the same thing. Yeah. You think what I'm saying? Well, you on. can't say same... something about somebody that's overweight. If I'm right. if I'm telling you you're overweight, it's for a fucking reason, motherfucker. Get your right. health together. That shit ain't sexy. Right. What your it heart is, is... got them up. But it's like, but they'll let us say nigga all day. But let you yeah. say fat, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Let you say yeah. fat. Yeah. Oh, every big motherfucking over 300 pound nigga going to ban your ass. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. This is but the I'm world a that we live in. Motherfucker, so what the fuck? I say little toothpick nigga all day. What the <laughs> fuck? It's crazy, man. Like I said, it's the Matrix, and that's definitely something that um I'm not trying to live in because too many people is trapped in that bullshit. You know what I mean? Too much, man. But yeah, what I was saying originally, I saw you burning, so I was holding my blunt because I didn't want a motherfucking, you know, you know, take a smoke. But since you did, I said, man, "Fuck, fuck it, man. Here, nigga. You ain't doing yeah, you, man. nigga. Fuck my feelings, nigga. I'm a fucking you know smoke man? and do whatever the fuck I'm doing, no matter See, how you feel. That's what I'm. I'm talking not gonna about. go to bed tonight thinking, "Oh damn, I should have smoked my blunt while I was on." <laughs> because as soon as I got finished, the kids woke the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about, V. So, yeah, you know, like I said, salute, man. Um, We yeah. just, look, look, we just two grown-ass niggas having a conversation. Fuck all that fucking, yeah. all that entertainment shit, all that shit. Yeah. Nigga, we just had two niggas shooting just the talking. shit. Just talking. Just sure. You know what I wanted to ask you, though? When you was talking about the center earlier, when you were saying when you heard hip-hop and you said about the center, in the bridge, you say, uh, was it was it cousin Bruce? You used to hear cousin Bruce at the center. Uh, uh what, what see was cousin Bruce was a DJ in the in the hood, in our hood. They right. used to jam in the center. You had to pay so you could, you could enter. enter. Yeah, go to the door, get fresh just in order to get in. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But if it wasn't from this town, then you couldn't fight and win. <laughs> but yeah, cousin Bruce and Jappy Jap, yeah, and Gas, Gas, those yeah. were before my time. That was Molly Mall's older brothers. Molly's brother, they used to DJ and they showed Molly how to do that shit. Uh, and Jap and them niggas was part of that. A brother, Jappy Jap. You dig what I'm saying? So right. now, if you remember when I tell people I wrote the bridge and I, I made the bridge off the top of my head, right. all Molly did was he told me little simple keywords. Jappy Jap, Cousin Bruce. Just that, you know what I'm saying? Because if you don't remember, I did the song and it got pauses in it. You love to hear the story again and again. How it all got started way back when. Time to think. The monument is right in your face, sitting list the floor. Wow, you know. Right. So it wasn't a straight sixteen that you wrote. No, it was not. 
Wow. Wow. Hip hop was set out in the dark. Mm -hmm. They used to do it out in the park. Anybody could see that shit off their head. Every play that said his name, it rang an alarm, otherwise known as Mean T. Tom. And we was nice off the top of our head. Me, Shantae, and every nigga that hung with us. Wow. And so wow. making the bridge off the top of my head with just jot points on a fucking brown paper bag was no thing. But now, getting to that Chris nigga, he done fucked around. He's the first biter in history, for real. First biter. We never did this. But see, if you listen to you from South Bronx, the South Tower Bronx, the South right. Bronx. Nigga, that's a total ripoff of the bridge, right? But guess what? That song I did off the top of my head, you right. still rhyme like that shit. <laughs> and so when I started doing motherfucking shit like, Holly acclaimed that shit in the epitome. Your rhyme can't dance, so you can't get rid of me. Line mm. after line, I got calls and effect. I First took the mic with a one-two check. The hip hop world made juice cool offense. Game mm -hmm. got respect. See, nigga, you could have never Ooh. touched no shit like that to this Ooh. day, nigga. And that was 1987. And on top Ooh. of that, since we want to talk about Chris, but that nigga talk about I'm the best MC in the world. Oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. Why you want verses? If that performance that you gave there. Was what an MC does, nigga. You right. You the motherfucking MC, motherfucking of you the greatest. Oh, so, so you didn't think his uh his performance at versus was uh was Bro, a winner? check this out. He didn't understand the format that as much as he wanna say he the teacher. Right. He didn't understand the format that he was undertaking. What he was playing to was the crowd in the immediate audience. He didn't understand that there were going to be generations of people watching the internet that never heard Chris before, that do not know his words, that if he would have sang his words instead of keep putting a fucking microphone to the crowd mm -hmm. so the crowd could sing his shit. Yeah, I know that that too. Yeah. His fucking jumps his streams and whatever would have jumped phenomenally the next right. fucking day. Yeah, but what one, he looked yeah. like, what Kane made him look like was a no. fucking Neanderthal versus a motherfucking modern man that knows how to dignify himself with his vocals and, and, and make you feel what's going on. I mean, when uh, motherfuckers come to your show, nigga, they want you to sing the shit. The fuck we got to sing your song for? That's where he fucked up. Because right. I always said that Chris needs a crowd. If you was to sit there and listen to my vocals and his, you would know all through the years I've been dissing Chris and he's been ducking me, all right? Because it's like, I, I was like, uh, man, it it's crazy records. Chris is my man and forgave my hand. He couldn't touch me. Fucking mm -hmm. nigga took a cheap shot Cause in this game you got to learn to keep the hammer on the heat cock Fuck mm -hmm. around nigga wind up on the meat block I spit fire Give a nigga heat shock Sam's mm -hmm. the man He's sick And if <laughs> he would fucking try to breathe Click mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All in fun Salute to the blast master All in fun yeah, and that's why me and Chris see the same from he right. know you know what it is me and Chris I'm like the little brother that's just a fucking pest. <laughs> you can't do nothing about this nigga yo it's like I love this motherfucker but god damn <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's what it is it's like yo I'm that brother that you just can't you can't do nothing about this nigga yeah. gonna do what he do he gonna say what he say yeah, oh, but my. you, you, but you know. Uh oh, I time, hear my kids. I hear my kids. We gonna have oh. to do some shit. Okay, all right, man. Now, we can yeah, always I, continue, but you know, yeah. I, you know what's first in my life. My oh yeah, that that, that that that's immediate. Whenever, just just let me know. Hold the hold I'm coming right now, baby. Daddy's in the basement. I'll be right there. If it's uh, if it's ten minutes, an hour. I'm gonna yeah. take you. Look, look, no, 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 no. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm gonna take you into the life of Shan real quick. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it then.
That's what it is. That nigga can't, he can't get he can't get in the basement with his dad. <laughs> it's all right, Buddha. You okay? Oh, uh, you couldn't right. come downstairs with daddy. It's all right. What's the matter? Slow down. I'm here now. Stop being a punk. You're in front of the world right now. You got your cup. You good? Give me a high five. Say one time for your mind, two time for your soul. Hey, what's up, ahead, man? Please. <laughs> What's going on? I, yeah, I know how I know how I go. Hey, yeah, look, but, but anybody that's on my IG, y'all know who that is. That's Hope the Hope and whatnot. Blessings, <laughs> look, man. That's you ready real. to go back down? You want to come downstairs with Daddy? All right, cool. Yeah. Where's Ethan, Lyric? He's she. He's oh, he must be asleep. I ain't even asking. Come on, you come downstairs with Daddy. You turn on your YouTube, all right? Or play man. But this is the typical day in the life of Shan. That's what's up. Definitely, Time man. management. Respect. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people chase a dream so much that you neglect the things that are most important. Yeah. And when that dream doesn't materialize, right? and you've neglected all the things that really meant something to you, sometimes it's too right. late to get back to that. You know right. what I'm saying? And so in the end of the day, I'll do the interviews, and if y'all can't understand that, I got to deal with my children too. No, you know, that, that's as a black man, I think that's a blessing. That is such a blessing. You can other black men that yo, <laughs> you can you know, still do what you got to do and still have time for your children. Include them. You know, you know, because that's exactly what what we fighting against is that a lot of brothers what they do is they'll they'll try to make that a choice like. You know, either I got to chill with my shorty or I got to go in the studio or I got to do an interview. Turn it down. Hold yeah. on. One more minute. Right. Two minutes. 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 What's his name? Elijah, but I call him Hota Hota. All right, Which salute. JJ in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> salute, man. Salute. Definitely, man. But yeah, like I said, you know, others are trying to make it a choice. You know what I mean? And it's not a choice. You know what I mean? Family first all the time. You know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely appreciate, you know, um, you, you know, sharing that with us, man. You know what I mean? That's real. You know what I mean? And respect uh, that highly. You know? Nowadays, everybody is so, I'm about me. I'm about me. Remember back in the days we used to have one boom box on the block? Oh, yeah. Nigga come out and he got eight extra batteries in the bag, right? Yeah, yeah. We're all listening to the same music and we're communicating and we're interacting. Right. Group celebrating one thing. Right. Nowadays, Niggas got his music and his ear part. That nigga got his music and his ear part. We're so separated now. And it's like normal. You dig what I'm saying? Forget you calling your family. I'm going to say hello on your Instagram post. Right. I don't yeah. come from that era. I come from the era of if you wasn't home when I, nigga, there wasn't no answer machines when mm -hmm. I'm that old. All mm -hmm. right. If mm -hmm. you wasn't home when the phone call came, you never knew you got it. And if it wasn't yeah. that important, Nick ain't called back. Yeah, he ain't calling back. All right? right. But now all this texting, don't text me because I'm a crazy, ill mind thinking. You might say, fuck you and be joking about it because I do it. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. But it's the way you read shit. It's, no it's like, I'd rather you call me because people read things different. I read <clears> it as half full. You read it as half empty. Right. And just the communication factor between our families, Thanksgiving ain't even the same like it used to be Definitely when I was right. young. Christmas right. are not the same. We all used to congregate at my grandmother's house. I don't give a fuck. And if you miss it, oh, we was all right. Away. You right, know what I mean? Right, right, right. Sit Nowadays, now. everybody's like on some trying to floss for the next family member. Like, come on, what the fuck? Nigga? Hey, everything done changed. It's the upside down. You know what I mean? Everything is just like, you know, 
on some other shit. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's 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 totally crazy, you know. Um wanted to jump back in real quick and um what's your what's your favorite track on Down by Law? I don't have one. Every one of them meant something. Every one of them was a different time and a different thing in my life. You right. dig what I'm saying? Got it's you. like all of those, every song I write is an emotion. Got you. You dig what I'm saying? It was something I was feeling. I was feeling mad about some rapper ass nigga or something. Right. Motherfucking left me lonely. Oh, bitch, now look at me. Aha. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Man, with another man left me lonely. You can't even come back to a nigga. Ah, I got money now. You <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and when we did, did you freestyle a lot of that? A lot of those songs on that album, like how you no, did. Uh... I, wrote, I wrote. I'm a writer. I don't like doing things happenstance. Now if we met up, and it was just us. Yo, t- in a spot where a child say, "Yo, shit." Rhyme on that nigga. Mm-hmm. Off the head, boom. But mm-hmm. far as my songs, if you don't notice, they're like choreographed dance. Right. Right. They're like choreographed dances that you you see that one, one four bars connects to the four bars and after that and after that and after that. I tell a story so vividly that instead of me just saying... A one, two, three, four, break. A two, 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 hey. I'll mm-hmm. tell you a story within two lines. Right. You dig what right. I'm saying? Right. Like, look, look. Like, it was like, she used to tell me that she loved me all the time, and I'd turn to her and say that I'm infatuated by your lovely smile, and someday soon she, we're going to walk the aisle. She said, you're my everything, mm-hmm. my strength for life. Uh, the mother of your children as well as your wife. She used to whisper in my mm. ear, I'm her one and only, but she ran. That's a story yeah. that although yeah. you don't see me or visually see me, right? you can put that together in your mind. And thanks to Ralph McDaniels that he brought that vision Slow. together with the video Left Me Lonely. Classic. That was the Classic. first video that Ralph McDaniels and Classic Concepts ever shot. Wow. Left me lonely. Wow. Okay. And yo, and he took my words and he actually made it visual. Classic, classic hip hop video. Classic. Classic concepts. Yeah. Ralph McDaniel, Uncle Ralph, you know I love you forever, salute. yo. Salute, salute, <laughs> Uncle Ralph. I video knew you before box. you was motherfucking motherfucking video music box. Yeah. And you know what? I think that motherfuckers hate on Uncle Ralph. He got archives on top of archives. Without question. Without well, question. Uncle Ralph I'm gonna need y'all niggas to make his shit pop because right. he own all that footage. Right. They're afraid of that. <laughs> That's what they're afraid you know what I'm of. Saying? Yep. Uncle Ralph got all that shit. All that shit that y'all niggas need. He got network. He has a whole network. Like he way. He got a whole Fuck. network of of content. He got years and years of networks of content. You know what I mean? So he got I mean, content that nobody on this planet Earth has. Yeah, without question. But this without is question. what this is. Look, but this is what the game of hip hop will do to you, right? And Uncle Ralph is another perfect example of what I was saying about us artists. They would try and make Uncle Ralph sell low on his motherfucking heritage and like those diamonds you got Ralph ain't real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, please. That's that's what it is. You dig what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's like mm-hmm. the, the squeeze that they put on us, man, is fucked up. And I and what man, you know what I see is that well, they Uncle use, Ralph don't need yeah. nobody. He can go do shit his motherfucking self. Yeah. You dig and what I'm saying? That's power. That's true power. You know what I mean? And the thing is, it's just like, you know, the the uh I think he the- recognizes it because he hasn't made a deal with one of these fuck niggas niggas yet. 
Well, yeah. If they want to pay him for some footage, I'm pretty sure he motherfucking sold them what they needed. Yeah. But he ain't made that deal the way, yo, y'all got my whole motherfucking casket of fucking goodies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got a bunch of shit, you know what I mean? And 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 uh, it's like, that's a whole fucking movie, you know what I mean? That shit he got. That's he what's got called whole... Masters, nigga. Yeah. If you want to equate it to music, Uncle yeah, Ralph got masters. masters. Like I said, he got Uncle a lot Ralph. of Masters. I love yeah. you, Uncle Ralph. And that was an LL move. And I love you too. <laughs> Definitely. Look, LL is a good King. cat, yo. Oh, what a good cat. And you like want to know why I say that? LL has done what he's done for his career and however it is. And he came back. Man. And he he's given artists the potential of fucking strive and get further. He's giving them shots and shows on on Sirius XM. So dope. Uncle L yeah. even called me, right? He so. said, yo, Ken, I want to, you know, and I got to respect that because all I could look at that is like, yo, this nigga trying to feed my kids, yo. That's real. He didn't know what I had going on in my mind, but he know his man Shizzle. Like, right. and I'm like, yo, oh, yo, look, L, you know me, nigga. I'll be fucking right in the middle of a show. I want to go smoke a blunt, drink a whistle, and I'll leave that shit dead air for six hours. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I can't do that, right? right? Well, let me tell you how good this man is. I say, yo, I can't do that, but I got these motherfucking uh, reality show shits, motherfucking... Uh, so and so and so and so, he had his production people call me on the TV end, but coronavirus hit. Right. But all I can say is that. But that he's that's that. people opportunities. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great gesture. You know what I mean? And definitely, you know, I mean, you LL Karis one, y'all all played an important role in 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 my life. You know what I mean? As far as the soundtracks in my life. And just to hear, like, you know, you say that about LL and, you know, different things you saying, how you love Chris, which, you know, we, you know, like, you know, I know, like, I'm like, I mean, they don't hate each other, but to hear you say that, you know, just as a fan and definitely coming up and, and watching the competition between everyone, it's just. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, so let me dope. just stop you one time, right quick. Yeah. But like I say, nigga, when it came time for you to get me paid, like I paid you through your career, and you had that versus, and you said, I'll do it with Kane, but I won't do it with Shan, because you know it was a check for me. Fuck right. you, Chris, on that end. See, Fuck you, Chris, on that end. That's that nigga slave shit, and you know how to fuck you up with records that niggas ain't even never heard. But in the end of the day, nigga, I fed your kids. So and when I it did. came time for you to feed my nigga, you Word. decided to do some other shit. Because Kane could have battle rock him like a motherfucker. This right. is the yeah. only one I would have done this with. Why? Because you know how to bust your ass. Fuck you, nigga. I fed mm. your kids. You got a whole career off me. I mm. love you like a motherfucker. But you know I'm going to tell you, fuck you at the same time. I want you to see the thing. Mm -hmm. Fuck nigga. Let me look around it. Fuck you, nigga. Because when it came time to feed my kids, you did exactly what the fucking white man would do to the rest of the motherfuckers, you fuck, nigga. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's fucked and up. And you know, you know I, I ain't mean? worried about it because we old ass men, but, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? But, but you still. know in your motherfucking heart, nigga. Yeah. Fuck you. I heard what you said. And if you say it that way, I could only respond with fuck you, nigga, because yeah. I ain't no pussy ass nigga. Yeah. Or you rather motherfucking not see my kids eat, nigga. Yeah, Any nigga that wanna see my kids eat. Fuck you, nigga. Exactly. Fuck you, nigga. Exactly. Let me repeat it. Fuck you, nigga. Without question. You know what I mean? Definitely, because that's some fish market look, shit look, right look. there. You see him? What's going on? He needed to eat, motherfucker. But it's a good thing that motherfucking I ain't need none of you niggas and I don't need to do no shows and none of that shit. So I don't give a fuck. Fuck hip hop, nigga. You keep going to sing shows. Oh, this is going to be the tour. What a Neanderthal. Fuck yeah. you, nigga. Yeah, that's Let cool. me motherfucking say that. I fuck with you. 
at a distance from now on. I would never speak to that nigga again. Yeah, I would I never go in a room with KRS one and try and friend and high five nigga. That'd be me being fake, nigga. Fuck you, nigga. You ain't motherfucking want to help me feed my kids on the end of the day. Fuck you, nigga. I would never shake your hand. I will never say hello. You can kiss my fucking ass. That's Straight real, up. Bro. That's real. That's real. Because you know what I mean? Just like you said, you, you don't, you don't, you don't fed. I don't kiss ass and I don't suck dick. Fuck yeah. you, nigga. That's real shit. You know That's what I mean? not fighting words, nigga. You mad because I won't talk to you? Fuck you, nigga. Do whatever. Be over there, though. But I he, got charges out this bitch, you, nigga. I can do time for doing dumb shit. Leave me alone. But what I'm saying, Shan, is that you know, you said you heard him say that, or you got to solidify that he said some shit the way to stop your No, money. I heard the nigga say it right there. On a, I would only do verses with him. That uh, nigga said that shit on stage. Nigga, I paid you. Nigga, you got a whole career off my back. But period, fuck the fact that you held your own and you made these people think that you ever fucking battled me. Nigga, you ain't never battled me. Only place we ever fucking been face to face like that, the Sprite commercial, nigga. And I still rocks you on that shit. 15 Yo, seconds. Real quick, because that was some... some. I remember when I saw that shit, I was wilding. You know what I mean? How, how the fuck did that come about, man? Because, just like everything, motherfuckers don't understand that the motherfucking powers that be want to capitalize off of what the fuck we got going on. Yes, they paid us very well, but imagine how much motherfucking money they made off of that. Come on. Crazy. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got paid what we thought was money. Right. We thought was good money. Who, that who, was like, who approached you about that? How did that come about? Well, it came through fucking sources, my fucking managers and shit. Mm. You know, Tyrone and, and other people made that happen. Okay, I got you. Why you don't see Molly in it? There was a time Molly couldn't stand him, Chris. You know? He couldn't stand him, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, Molly was like, fuck Chris. I don't want to do that motherfucking commercial. That nigga, he, in the beginning, he really did not like them motherfuckers mm. at all. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Fucking, and then you know he ain't want to do the commercial. He like fuck Chris, nigga. Shit, but at that time, like at least what three, three, three to five years later, he did an album with him, didn't he? Molly, Marl and Karis right, one, right? He did an album with him. Right. Whatever reason they did it, ain't you know what I'm saying? It ain't my thing to do. Yeah, no, nah, I'm just saying, you know, from that point. But I can though, say yeah. this, look. I'm that nigga that I talk so much shit. I done talk so much shit about Molly, but he my nigga nowadays. We good. That's but good. he know that I'm that nigga going to say what the fuck I want to say when I want to say, oh, yeah, you want to talk that shit, nigga? Well, I'm going to go produce hell, hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you still talking shit? I'm going to produce Chris. Mm -hmm. But in 2021, me and Molly get money together like a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, all of that should. young childish mentality once oh. it has dissipated and, and me and Molly good like a motherfucker. I call that nigga on a regular basis. But like I, I said, all kind of countries. I don't know where the fuck this nigga be. This nigga be all around. <laughs> bro. I think it's a clothes man. I That's think that God, nigga got man. a gold. And That's he do God. like it. Whoop, bang, wherever his finger <laughs> land. That's where the fuck he at. Yeah, that's the God, B, you know what I mean? But the thing is that that all that, those trials and tribulations is all for a reason, you know what I mean? You know, hopefully it was for a reason that people learn from, you know what I mean? So, you know, and and, and hopefully matured from, even with, with, with Chris, hopefully he learned from that moment right there, you know, and, and know not to do no, no shit like that, you know? Again. Ain't nobody care about that. What the niggas learn, they let. I ain't worried about nobody lessons. Like I said, fuck hip hop. I don't mm -hmm. need to do a versus with Chris or none of this shit. Nigga, I got money in the bank. Niggas mm -hmm. ain't seen me do shows in years. Nigga, I'm building tiny homes. Look at this shit. Let me show you some shit. Yeah, let me get, let's get into that right there, please. Look, now. All of the motherfucking, look, I done built the motherfucking, the boom box under the seat. 
So you think what I'm saying? I got a yeah. every day Amazon comes and brings me shit. So what how long you started doing this with the craftsmanship? Because I couldn't let me tell you something. See, people will take advantage of you and act like things that they do are rocket science. Right. And when you're a person like me and you don't understand that I'm trying to give you a check, nigga, I could do this for myself, you stupid motherfucker. Right. That's your law. Because, like, how it started was with the bus. I was going to pay niggas to do that bus for me. But everybody tried to look at me like I'm some, you know what I'm saying, nigga? I ain't no mock motherfucker. I know how much it Matter of fact, fuck all you niggas. And then I opened my mouth on live air, TV, internet, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I said, I'm going to build this motherfucking bus myself. What? My other conscience on this side of my head said, yo, nigga, you know what you just said, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then the other side say, yo, you know these people gonna wait for you to fail, right? You know that, right? And I love when people think that I'm gonna fail. It's a challenge. And I didn't go ahead and I done did what I did and I got a bus outside. I'm not even thinking about that stupid bus. It sits in the back of my yard because I do too many things and I'm on to too many things that it's like the bus is a done deal. Damn it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm on to building the RV now. But what that has taught me is like, hmm, I can actually step out of hip hop. It's so easy for me to do this building shit that I'm going to buy little trailers that people just got sitting on their yard. I don't care about the inner workings. I'm mm, going to so, build a tiny home. So now, real, these tiny homes are some new shit that these people are all gallivanting about. You already know who I'm talking about. I could buy a motherfucking trailer home for 3500 flip it the way I flip it, because I'm not worried about hip-hop because I relinquish that. Once you relinquish okay, the, but, oh, I've got to be MC Shan all day, and I've got to be this, and I I relinquish that. I don't give a fuck if a nigga notice me when I walk down the street. Nigga, I'm good with that shit because I'm getting money somewhere else. Hip-hop right. don't pay for old school niggas, and any old school nigga that's still in this hip-hop thinking that he's going to get a heyday, nigga, you got a fucking mental fucking situation going on that you can only fucking work yourself out. Amen to that. So now, because it went out a little bit, we was glitching. So what you do is you take uh, RVs, used <laughs> RVs, buses, and you restore them to uh, to a to a brand new state, or is it a custom made state that you uh, you you? That's do a it? shizzle state. Shizzle state. It's a shizzle state. See, so like I, I said, let, let me show you something. Why is it a shizzle state? Now, if I show you this light, right? This light didn't come with this little hard bar on it. Right. It came with a boom. The light that you see in there totally doesn't belong in there. Right. Totally. I'm going to show you what it is. I use the fucking mental shit that we were fucking given as black people as fucking rulers of the earth mm -hmm. and I fucking put it back into action. Now you see this right here? See how it's got all of these little gadgets and all of that crazy mess on it? Mm -hmm. Now it become a whole new brand new franchise. Okay? So if Shizzle was to build you an RV, it's not going to be anything that you can buy on the market because this lamp that you're looking at, this is a shizzle original, although I've made it from shit that's around my house. I'm going to show you how crazy I am. You see the bar that's on the light? I'm going to show you where I got it from. This bar, right? Right. I cut it off of some shit. And I got strapped right here. <laughs> a full <laughs> on fucking, 
I'm a crazy motherfucker like that, yo. I'm not creative, gonna, and, and I made a beautiful piece of furniture from it. Innovator, can't stop. You innovating. what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, when you get a fucking uh, RV that's built by Shizzle, it's gonna be totally exotic things that you can't get. So I'm creating my own. I'm creating my own means of income. And at the same time, I'm digging into the fucking senses. I, y'all niggas know I entertained y'all for fucking 20 years. When did I have time to fucking learn how to be a craftsman with wood, this, that, and the other? As, as by matter of fact, hold on. Mm-hmm. When did I have time? To learn how to fucking make craftsmanship like this. Oh, that's nice. You see what I'm saying? I built this with my own hands, not knowing. See, I've got it all lined out, the whole thing. I put the the thing in it, not knowing anything about carpentry. Wow. All I did wow. was dug into my inner self. And I said, this shit ain't rocket science. If you learn how to add and divide and fucking shit and math when you were in fifth grade, you can do all of this shit. And that's what I try and teach on my Instagram. Hey, this motherfucker's a rap nigga. Watch how, watch how I turn this motherfucker into a tiny home, right. piece by piece. And right. like I said, I built this. I yeah. like creating. Now... Baby. How long something like how long did that piece right there take? One day. I got the other side over there finished too. Mm. And I'm filming it like a Bob Vila show. That's I've got stuff. cameras in my ceiling that when I do this work, I just turn the ceiling cameras on. I don't talk on them or nothing. That's B-roll. Right. Just watching me build these pieces. And when I put the RV back together, right. I'm going to show how I built this, how I built not just. Now, you, you've sold, you sold some pieces already, some RVs and some pieces already? No, no. This is my first. I don't need to sell an RV, right. right? I don't need to sell that RV once I make it. That's my personal joint. Gotcha. But what I'm doing is also saying, damn, I'm creating an industry for myself. Right. It takes me nothing. And no time to do this. I've got a Home Depot credit account. I get the wood. But my first thing is, but after I built the bus, the bus was harder than this. But what I did was coronavirus taught me who I was. What did because you do I with built the bus, that bus. Huh? What did you do with the bus? Like that? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Yard. I'm like, what? what? Sitting in my yard. What certain pieces did you 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 hook up on it, or you wanted to hook up on it? I hooked up everything. Um, I've got a video on YouTube that'll show you from the moment I went and bought the bus with the seats and the wheelchair stuff in it until the time that I finished the bus. The bus got a stupid system. It got seven TVs. It could fit fourteen people. Leather lights, everything. Mm. Mm. But I'm, a, I'm a, I am get bored quick. And so, okay, the bus is done. I ain't mm -hmm. even got time to run the bus company. My daughter will be down here in two weeks to run the fucking bus company. I ain't got time. I'm building RVs now. I ain't got time for that shit. I'm and on you, to the next shit so quick that you should call me Mr. Nevermind. Never had a style that one could ever define or put a finger on. First to put a singer on and the in the, in the bridge. Well, that seems to linger on. Mm. I maintain scores with these brain walls, apocalyptic in my flows. <laughs> mm. Come on, man. Come on, man. You talking about, yeah, man, you are the embodiment of hip hop, bro. Regardless, you know what I mean? Right. Oh, let me get him some gay day. Yeah, definitely. He to, look, he keep pointing towards his cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I got to do the daddy thing. And see, like I said, you have to learn how to divide your time and share your time. 
Without Sometimes question. you can't just be out there doing whatever. I go to interviews, my kids in tow. You know what I'm saying? They know how to act, but I got to do it. Yeah, without question. And just keep on putting everything on the grind and neglect everything. You're going to look back and say to yourself, like, damn, why would I do that? Right. Even if even if you do attain that success that you're aiming to achieve, there's going to be a lonely spot. Why? Because your kids is going to resent you because you were never there. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's right. always going to be a sacrifice that's going to happen along the way in this fucking business with this bullshit. It's going to be a super fucking stuff. Well, it's definitely a, a great jewel that you pass into to to your son. You know what I mean? Showing that hey, you can do do things that that's gonna gonna help you prosper you, but still take take time to you know be with your children or do things or whatever. It's teaching responsibility, and 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 that's 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 real. You know what I mean? You know, but yeah, uh, man. This this little one right here, I could give him a screwdriver. And tell him to go over there and yo take them screws out of that joint. Mm. Mm. My younger one, I got videos on the internet from the other day. I couldn't even, he wouldn't even let me help him with the screwdriver. Mm -hmm. And so, like I say, the things that you do around your children, they soak that shit up like a sponge. 100%. Last night I'm looking at them. We in the garage. They got their rags on, they got their gloves on, and they squeezing. Clean, cleaning his car. <laughs> mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? That's but the stuff. that's the shit that they see their daddy do. Right. And so I'm like, what your kids see you do, they soak it up. And whether you think they're not looking or whatever, they're looking. Without question. Without question. They're looking. Yeah. Oh, here go my other one. Say hey, hi. Hey. One time for your mind. How you doing? <laughs> and these are not my grandchildren. These are my kids. Why your hey. pants look, boy? Let's go get your cup. <laughs> All right, now it's time for me to do daddy time. Got you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, this, All is, right? this is beautiful, man. Definitely appreciate it, brother. Appreciate it. And, uh, anytime, Shan, definitely would like to have a uh, part two or whatever. You know what I mean? Whenever you awesome. ready, you know you got you got connections, nigga. Stop yeah. playing like you ain't got yeah. connections. Nigga. I got you. I got you. But this was yo, this was everything. You're trying to be nigga. modest right now, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is everything. Salute to you. Salute to the family. Uh, this is great. You know what I mean? And um, definitely, right. man. I I'll talk to you soon. Take All care. Right, that's what's Salute. Up. All right. And one time for your mind. Two time. For your soul, it's All your right, man. Sound for your soul. MC Shan one on Instagram. Y'all remember to check with your man. I'll be talking mad shit, whether you like it or not. That day, who give a fuck? Bye. <laughs> Definitely, man. I'm an honor, man. Straight honor. MC Shan, peace. Yo, that was incredible. That was incredible. We probably gonna uh, more than likely get a part two to that, but that was an uh, incredible moment right there for me. Salute to MC Shan. Salute to Romy. Uh, Archer Boy Music, definitely check them out. Catch saying, you know, like I said, family, man, that's the most important thing. You know what I mean? And um, this was incredible to talk to a legend and to see him, uh, you know, in his element. And, um, you know, you want to talk about longevity in hip hop and and doing what you got to do and learning from the ills and the, the evils of hip hop, you know crazy so yeah man thanks for um for stopping by this is the pinoy podcast the mc shan interview i'm toast johnson take care salute i'm out shizzle